Hey everyone, Dr. Chuck back again with part two of my side-by-side -side comparison of 410A versus 454B. Uh, part one, if you haven't caught it, you may want to jump out and check it, but we there we talked about the uh, cylinder differences, some of the changes in the color, the labeling, pressure relief devices. Part three, which is going to be released here shortly, is to talk more about some of the safety handling and, and field uh, information you need to know. But today I want to talk about the refrigerant properties and performance. Uh, comparing 410A versus 454B. And, uh, you know, if we put some of the properties that are always of interest when we're comparing refrigerants uh, up here, you can see some of these are very similar and there are some changes and we'll kind of go through the important ones. But things like molecular weight, boiling point, uh, materials compatibility, lubricant recommendations, temperature glide, all those are going to be very, very similar handling and similar uh, performance and the case where you have to do anything drastically different than 410A is going to be minimal. So I just want to throw the pressure temperature curves up here. That's kind of the heart of what we do is pressure temperature manipulation in the HVACR industry. And you can see how close they are, both the liquid and uh, vapor pressures uh, for 410, 454B, pretty much right on top of each other over the whole applicable range. Another thing some old time engineers and even some younger ones like to do as well is just take a look at the pressure enthalpy curves and see how closely they match in terms of pressures uh, and uh, net refrigeration effect and those type of things. And again, you can see very, very similar. There's a little spacing here on the right side, uh, which basically means you get a little more net refrigeration effect, but some of that uh, changes based on your system. But again, you like to see this kind of agreement when you're getting a new refrigerant and want it to perform. Uh, like an old refrigerant. So one of the first things we do is, you know, do a theoretical uh, refrigeration cycle calculation analysis, and, and that's what you see the results of here. Basically assume a set of, you know, air conditioning, evaporator, uh, condensing temperatures, uh, typical efficiencies, and then you see what the different refrigerants do. And you can see how closely the 410 and the 454B match on a theoretical basis. Now, the next step we often do is uh, actually what we call a soft uh, optimization or, or drop-in test. We take a piece of equipment. Uh, this is something you can't do in the field because the A2L, the so 454B, is going to be uh, for new equipment only. But put it into a system in the laboratory and make as minimal changes as possible. In this case, we changed the uh, uh, thermal expansion valve to an electronic one so we could match, uh, for comparison purposes, the superheat. But again, you see the performance here in this very crude uh, drop-in comparison. A uh, little bit lower capacity, a little bit better uh, COP or energy performance. And again, the operating pressures and temperatures right on the money. Very, very close. Nothing too far out of bounds that's going to cause any concern or be anything drastically different when you're servicing 454B systems compared to what you're used to with 410A. So based on this good match and performance, obviously the OEMs, as they're designing and optimizing new equipment designed specifically for 454B, are going to do everything they can to squeeze every last bit of energy efficiency and capacity out of these new units. So we're very confident as those equipment roll out here in the future into the field and get installed and serviced, it's going to be a great solution for all of our mutual customers. Let me talk about temperature glide a little bit. So glide here uh, for 454B is about two degrees, where 410A was around one degree or even a little less. Very minimal, uh, not something we have to be overly concerned with. You know, if you look back uh, in the history of refrigerants, we've been very successful, things like 407C, which have about a 12 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature glide. So all the good practices we use, take liquid out of the jug, uh, use the dew point when you're calculating superheat, uh, and top off refrigerants, uh, if they need some uh, more charge in the field, is certainly uh, appropriate, acceptable, and won't show any uh, detrimental performance. In fact, I'm going to throw a chart up here of what we call one of our leak recharge analysis. So basically have a system, we assume it leaks, worst case leak, about 50%, then we recharge it. Uh, we do that again and again, up to a total of five times. And uh, we look for any slight variations in the composition of the refrigerant and how that's going to impact its performance. And you can see here on a relative basis, you might lose a percent or two of performance, but nothing that's going to be noticeable. And after that, it levels out. So uh, this is really, really worst case. And even at that point, it's not a, 
uh, a great concern. So we're very confident in our recommendation to top all 454B if it needs service in the field. So I hope some of this uh, gives you some confidence and uh, gets you excited about working with 454B in the future. Again, part one was about the refrigerant jug and the cylinder. Uh, the next part I'm gonna do here in the next few days is gonna be all about uh, the tools, trucks, handling it in the field, some of the A2L uh, safety protocols and procedures that you're gonna, gonna be aware of. Again, there's a lot of training, uh, a lot of great uh, trainers uh, from Comores and other ag uh, agencies out there in, in the field. I encourage you to learn as much as you can about A2L refrigerants. They are gonna be a big part of our future. And always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, get back to me and we'll put them into a future video. Stay safe out there. Thanks for following the channel and we'll talk to you soon. So long. Thank you.